Hello everyone, this is Carbonomics. There are plenty of people that like to call themselves contrarians, but very few actually fit that description. Depending on the accounts you follow online, you can feel like everyone thinks of themselves as one. You tend to see this most notably with commodity investors, specifically. The grueling commodity bear market, starting around 07 to 08, that lasted over a decade, absolutely decimated the commodity sector. People buying commodities in 2018 to 2019, like myself, that was clearly a contrarian move back then. Nowadays though, inflation is the front page financial story. Everyone's paying attention to commodities. The only sector you could make a case for at this point is the precious metals. Yeah, I would call you a contrarian if you're still interested in gold right now. Although I say that, but carbon credits are also a commodity as well. One that will become increasingly important as the world seeks to transition to a net zero future, dramatically reducing carbon emissions. And as we'll cover in this video, absolutely no one is a fan of carbon credits right now. No one's watching the space, in the public markets anyway. The public carbon credit companies have virtually no interest or analyst coverage. You know, any news publications about carbon credits are nearly 100% negative. You know, if you want a contrarian sector, you've hit the jackpot. A contrarian is someone who finds undervalued sectors nearing an inflection point. You know, someone who doesn't care that an industry or a company is despised if the fundamentals dictate there's something to be excited about. Someone who's interested when a company is at new lows or if there's some sort of unjustified hatred of a space. As far as I'm aware, I'm currently you know, one of the only YouTubers making content about carbon credits on a regular basis. Uh, most of the other YouTubers I've seen that make videos about carbon credits, you know, of which there are a few to begin with, uh, they've all largely stopped making content. You know, I've resigned to the fact that this video ultimately isn't going to get very many views. Yeah, you know, it would be pretty funny though if it did, um, <laughs> but it won't. You know? And that is another piece of evidence to clearly show just how hated this sector really is. I see a very similar thesis playing out with carbon credits that I saw playing out with commodities like coal just a few years ago. You know, coal was in a similar situation to carbon credits around 2019 to 2020 uh, when I was researching companies in the coal space. Although, you know, coal was in an even worse spot back then. No one wants to own a new coal mine and they will be demonized by the entire Western world for building it. You know, not even the more right-wing folks want to put their weight behind coal. You know, everyone knows how it's not great for the environment or the workers in those mines. You know, even the largest publicly traded coal producers had gone through bankruptcy several times. Environmental regulations were destroying those companies, and all but the best mines had to pause production because prices were so bad. In 2020, coal was in such a depressed state that the sector's only ETF was shut down due to a lack of investor interest. Yeah, at least carbon credits didn't have it that bad. But you'll see in a second that you know carbon credits aren't exactly in favor right now. While carbon credits haven't seen markets that bad per se, you know, the public investment options have seen their stock prices absolutely decimated since the sector was seeing a boost in popularity in 2021. You know, all these stocks are down 50% or more, with a significantly stronger macro tailwind behind carbon credits as an environmental asset. Uh, than compared to something like coal. But the difference between coal and carbon credits is that carbon credits have a future where they can be viewed in a positive light. You know, coal simply doesn't. The public perception of coal is never going to change, in my view. But on the other hand, environmentalists will have to realize at some point that there is no net zero future without carbon credits. Coal stocks like Ramico Resources were able to 10x over just one to two years once the sector turned. So what do you think can happen over time once the market wakes up on carbon credits? You know, currently, the vast majority of the public doesn't even know what carbon credits are. Or if they do, they clearly despise them. You know, the left hates carbon credits because they see it as a form of greenwashing. And the right hates carbon credits because of their skepticism towards climate change in general. You know, some of that animosity is warranted, as there is fraud that occurs in the carbon credit space. But as I covered in another video on the Guardian's hit piece against carbon credits a few months ago, you know, there's not nearly as much fraud as proponents claim. The Guardian was suggesting that over 90% of Vera's carbon offsets were essentially useless, uh, and that was a pretty outrageous estimate. You know, the media, 
likely dominated by radical environmentalists, constantly publish hit pieces on carbon credits. What they don't seem to understand is that we're all on the same side here, and carbon credits are necessary to fill in the gaps that other emissions reduction measures simply can't handle. Now, these radical environmentalists assume that we can genuinely hit net zero with just renewable energy in electric vehicles, and that is outright false. Now, the globe currently consumes around 100 million barrels of oil per day, and this isn't even mentioning other fossil fuels. Uh, and all these products in this list contain some type of petroleum product. You know, perfumes, tires, vitamins, deodorant, soap, fertilizers, and so much more. You know, taking fossil fuels out of the production of these products isn't as simple as slapping up a couple wind turbines. This necessitates the usage of something like carbon credits. And the market doesn't understand what's going on here at all. And that creates an opportunity for the few retail investors that are paying attention, like ourselves. Well, you know, I should say that the public markets don't understand what's going on. There are tens of billions of dollars flowing into the carbon markets already. It's just in the private sector. You know, T-Rail Price Group spent nearly $2 billion just in November buying 1.7 million acres of forest to generate carbon credits. Apple, Microsoft, and other large corporations are buying up carbon projects as well. So many of these large institutions do get it, but the public sector just doesn't quite yet. You know, carbon credits will likely be one of the most obvious beneficiaries of 2030 climate goals because of a relative lack of action towards those climate goals so far, you know, especially thanks to the current macroeconomic environment. The only way for a company to cut emissions quickly and hit their goals will be buying up carbon credits to offset its emissions. You know, I gave coal as an example of another contrarian investment thesis earlier in the video. And coal was so appealing in 2019 to 2020 because there was no capital entering the space. You know, no one was going to spend money to bring on new supply, so the existing assets value grew substantially as supply continued to dwindle. So carbon credits are a little different. Uh, the long-term outlook for carbon credits is so bullish because this sector is set to see a drastic increase in demand. Existing supply and developers simply won't be able to keep up with the influx of new companies trying to offset emissions. According to McKinsey, the demand for carbon credits could increase by 15 times by 2030 and 100 times by 2050, you know, meaning the voluntary carbon markets could be worth upwards of $50 billion by 2030. And the current market size is around just $2 billion. So a market valuation of $50 billion would be a 25x from here. Now, who knows exactly how much of that value would go to the publicly traded companies, but it could certainly be significant. Yet the publicly traded carbon credit royalty companies are trading significantly below NAV. Many of them are closing in on cash flows. So it will be very interesting to watch you know, how this sector develops over the next several years. But yeah, you know, that's going to be the end of the video. If you want to learn more about some of the royalty companies you can invest in, I'll link some of those videos down in the description below. Thanks for watching.